Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we're going to go over to California in the United States again and this is my first Californian beer review for you in quite some time if memory serves me correctly but most of you will know this brewery. Um, it's Anchor Brewing Company so really considered one of the forefathers of the American craft beer movement and we're going to have a taste of Breckel's Brown Ale. If you've watched my channel before you will know that uh, the American Brown Ale really is one of my favourite styles of beers. I really like Lead, red ales and I really love brown ales as well so it's really cool to finally get around to reviewing this beer for you because along with Brooklyn Brown this was probably one of the beers that got me into that style and as I say I really love this particular style of beer. So as is usual with my beer reviews then I will take you through a very kind of short history of the brewery, two or three minutes for this one but if you want to get straight to the tasting feel free to fast forward to that point of the video and um, the brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've already done from these guys and they're will be more added to that in the very near future. So anyway, the roots of the Anchor Brewery can be traced back to German brewer Gottlieb Breckel who opened at a brewery in 1849 in a billiard saloon on Pacific Street in San Francisco. This was during the gold rush era in America. But the brewery later became known as Anchor in 1896 when it was bought by fellow Germans Ernst Barrett and Otto Schinkel. Ernst Barrett suddenly died in 1906 and then the brewery was consumed by a fire uh, caused by the great earthquake of San Francisco in that year as well but just after relocating following this fire in 1907 Otto Schinkel was actually hit by a streetcar so he was out of action but fortunately the brewery was maintained by other German brewers jo Josef Krauss and August Meyer and liquor, owner, uh, liquor store owner Henry Tietjen was also involved there as well. But Anchor was effectively shut down in 1920 when they introduced Prohibition in America and there's little or no record of Anchor Brewery doing either anything illegal or legal during this period, although the website admits that there may have been some illegal activities going on in terms of brewing beer during that period. But thankfully Prohibition ended in America in 1933 and Josef Krauss actually began brewing the steam beer once again after a hiatus of 13 years. But the brewery then had another stroke of bad luck in February 1933 when it caught fire but he actually reopened the brewery in an old brick building with a new partner at a location a few streets away from the brewery's current location in San Francisco. Now Josef Krauss and Joe Allen actually managed to keep Anchor afloat until Krauss's death in 1952 but by late 1959 the demand for mass produced beers in America re resulted in declining sales and Josef Strauss actually shut the, uh, the brewery down completely but it opened again in 1960 with Allen joined by Lawrence Streza um, but the problem with the the sales persisted. Now, Americans at that time really wanted their kind of macro brews and um, it was really affecting the kind of craft beer market. But Fritz Maytag actually heard of the problems and he bought a 51% share of the brewery, saving it from the imminent bankruptcy and that happened in 1965. So in 1971 Fritz actually bottled the famous steam beer for the first time and the brewery began to grow steadily um, since then. And the brewery then moved to their current location in an old coffee roast, uh, roasting plant, if you like, in Mariposa Street. And that's where they remain to this day. And ever since that point in time, the breweries began to grow. They've also got distilling operations now as well, which is very interesting. As I say, go and read the brewery's history website and you'll get a bit more in-depth history of it. But in 2010, after 45 years, Fritz Maytag announced his retirement and the sale of the brewery to Kreeth Gregor and Tony Folio, who actually agreed to preserve and expand the brewery's current operations and as I've said to you at the start of the video um, Anchor Brewery really are one of the kind of premier brewers of America and if, if you're going back to the 1970s I think these guys might actually be the oldest um, continually operating brewery in America, the sort of continually operating craft brewery so very cool that these guys are still going and they've got a very interesting history so as I say go and read about it for yourself if you're interested in it further, I just did a short history for you for this video but um, to list a few of the other beers you can get from these guys, their year round beers include Anchor Small, Liberty Ale which is an IPA, Anchor Porter, Old Foghorn which is a barley wine ale, this guy here Breckles Brown, the California Lager, Humming Ale, Bock Beer, Big Leaf Maple, that is a beautiful one, I've reviewed that for you before, and Our Barrel Ale and they also have their annual Christmas ales as well which is very very cool. So we'll get on to the tasting of this beer itself, I'd go and check out the website as I say if you're interested in more about their beers, but um, let me just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one, I always like the way Anchor do their beers, these kind of little stubby bottles are very very nice, I'll put the light down just to make sure you can see that there. 
And as you can see, very, very nicely presented. A kind of satin label on this one in comparison to the sort of paper labels you get on the other ones, but very nicely presented. As you would guess, this beer is named after Gottlieb Brakel, who was the original owner of the brewery that went on to become Anchor Brewery. So very cool that they've kind of remembered that point in their history. Um, it has a little bit of a description on the top. It says, Anchor roots date back to the early 1850s when pioneer brewer Gottlieb Brakel arrived in San Francisco in 1871. He bought a beer and billiard saloon near Russian Hill, transforming it into the brewery that 25 years later was renamed Anchor. We celebrate the 140 plus years of San Francisco brewing tradition and the legacy of our Anchor brewers with this classic all malt single hop brown ale. Uh, it says here, Brewmaster Andrew Cap ba Brewmaster Mark Carpenter's unique recipe for Breckles Brown is a tip of the hat to our first brewmaster. Our special blend of roasted malts creates a coppery brown colour and an unusual depth of flavour, richness and complexity without heaviness. The subtly entrancing characteristics of a single hop called Citra perfectly complement the singular maltiness. Cheers from the Anchor Brewers. So, very, very cool brewery. There's the Anchor bottle cap on this one. On their beers, this bottle cap is always the same, just apart from being a different colour depending what you what beer you actually buy. Um, imported from America by James Clay into Elland down in England somewhere. So looks very nice. So without further ado, let's get on with this beer and get on with the tasting. So as you can see, a nice little smoky opening there. I love I'm just so happy to be able to review this beer for you finally very very nice before we get on with the tasting I'll just tell you the actual stats of this beer um, it's a, I believe it is a 6% American brown ale as you would guess it's hopped and dry hopped with both the citra hop as it said in the description the malt base is of two row Munich and caramalts and as I told you before the beer is named after Gottlieb Brakel who was the first brewmaster of the company that went to become anchor 25 years later so as you can see this beer is poured with a nice finger of head it's a sort of beigey color but definitely frothy not really bumpy at all if I hold it up to the light here I'll just bring up the camera and make sure you can see the colour of this beer properly. If I bring that up there you can see it's definitely a sort of chestnutty uh, colour with this one. Did chestnut or rosewood? I always like to describe the beers like that because everyone knows these colours. But um, it looks very very nice. If I hold it up to the light there's a bit of a ruby tinge kind of around the edge. I can't see much in the way of carbonation. You can just see little bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head but I'm guessing that that's just because of the colour of the beer. So let's have a wee look at the aroma with this guy. So as you would expect, there's a lot of caramel maltiness in this one. There's a good bit of fruity element to it as well, which is quite interesting. So you've got a nice caramel fruity malt with this guy. It actually has a bit of a slightly treacly smell to it. You can just smell that with the sort of brown sugars, but it's got a nice toasted malt aroma. Big bready presence in this as well, particularly when you sugar it up. If you go out, if you take your nose a little bit further back from it and just smell it like that, you can really pick up the big bready malts. But it's a big caramel and brown sugary malt you're getting off of this. But there's definitely a kind of dark, um, a dark fruit element to this, you know, sort of. It's actually quite sharp, so it's probably more plums and raisins rather than the kind of more mild figgy aroma. But I'm actually getting a little bit from this. You can pick up a little bit of the alcohol warmth, even though it's only 6%. It's been a long time since I've had this beer, so it's really cool to actually think about it properly. But yeah, it smells absolutely beautiful, and as I always say, with these beers, just take a little bit of time to smell them, because it's always good to link the aroma to the taste. But without further, is it, further ado, this is one of the beers that got me into the brown ale, which is really my favourite style of beer. So this is Breckel's Brown Ale from Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco, California. Cheers. Really, very, very nice beer. Yeah, you've got a nice toasted bready malt aroma with this one. The bready malts in this guy are actually very like rye bread. It's got a sort of cereal element to it and they just blanket the middle of the tongue. 
so very very nice and as you move into the aftertaste actually even though it's only after a sip or two you really are getting the sort of cereally element of the beer just sitting there in the back of the tongue but a very nice kind of caramel malt base and a sort of rye bread element to it as well very nicely blended the, the malt base in this guy yeah really are picking that up but you get a little oily bubble that moves towards the front of the mouth that's where you're getting a little bit of the fruit flavours but it also helps bring out the caramel component of the flavour as well I absolutely love this beer so I'm, I'm so happy that I can actually review this one for you on the channel yeah the rye bread malt base in this really is beautiful I really I do like it when they can do it the Americans I've seen call that sort of flavour pumpernickel bread so those of you watching in the states that's probably the kind of flavour you're getting for this but to me it reminds me of the sort of German and uh, Baltic rye breads that we get over here but it's a beautiful flavour nonetheless the Americans also like to describe a uh, treacle as molasses so you're getting there's de a definite kind of molasses or treacle element to the flavour here as well yeah it's much like the aroma, you've got a really nice toasty bready malt in here, as I said it's a kind of rye bread flavour that you're getting from it, but you've got a nice kind of caramel and roasted brown sugar element, there's maybe just a little bit of kind of coffee in there too, not so much chocolate but although I can see why people would think there's maybe chocolate in it as you move into the aftertaste there's a sort of roasted coffee chocolatey maltiness that just sits um, around the edges of the tongue there um, and the bitterness that comes out in the aftertaste is, is kind of um, sort of coffee and roasty dish and a little bit chocolatey as well it's just before the edge of the tongue but on the edge of the tongue you're getting just a teeny teeny little bit of grassiness but you're getting the kind of nice dark fruits and the dark fruit flavours in this one in my opinion are actually quite sharp so I'd be more inclined to describe them as being sort of raisins or plums rather than figs. To me the figs is a kind of more mild sort of candied fruit flavour but it's more of a kind of sharper raisins and figs but this bottle is very is very close to its kind of sell by date so maybe it's a little bit more of the esters coming out I'm not sure. But regardless it's a beautiful beer. But yeah a really nice big multi bready presence that just blankets the tongue there some nice kind of sweet caramel that moves down the middle of the tongue but you've got a nice element of kind of nutty and woodiness to this beer as well the thing that's so cool about this beer is that it's produced by one of the bigger craft brewery companies but it really doesn't lack in flavour there's a hell of a lot of complexity in this beer and it really is one of the icons of the style probably along with the Brooklyn Brown it's a beautiful beautiful beer but yeah I would stick with that you've got a nice caramel malt base that's in there in the middle of the tongue, some kind of rye bread that just blankets the middle of the palate. There's an element of nutty and woody flavours to this as well but the nice mix of the cereal element, the sort of rye bread flavours, it, it all blends together really well so just think a little bit about the malt base in this one but there is some kind of coffee, a roasted kind of coffee element that just goes out towards the edge of the tongue just before you get the hoppy elements and there is a little bit of kind of chocolatey sweetness to that but around the edges of the palate that's where you're getting the kind of fruity esters and it tastes it's quite it's a bit sharp so I would be inclined to say raisins and plums so very very nice looking beer so in terms of the mouthfeel with this one um, it's definitely it's actually quite light bodied for a brown ale it's not too heavy so it's quite sessionable which is something I like but I probably even if I was wanting to session the beers I probably wouldn't drink more than one of these to me this is a tasting beer rather than a, a sort of sessionable beer but that's just me from living in Germany I like the Hellas beers in that sort of sense dark beers for me are tasting beers but it's mid bodied um, it's got a nice kind of smooth carbonation but at the same time it's got a nice wet mouth feel and that's where you're getting a lot of the fruity flavours in this one but it's got a big sweet character to it from the malt base it feels big and malty and it's slightly dry on the finish and you are getting a kind of lingering sort of a uh, cereally flavour with this one but you've got a nice roasted and slightly coffee element to it as well which is what you always expect of a brown ale and there is a bit of caramel sweetness too but it's a very easy drinking beer and if you do like sessioning darker beers it probably is one that you could do that with but to me as I say I like to session the lighter beers to me this is a tasting beer but as I always say beer is subjective but anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review it's been really cool to review for you one of my favourite beers one of the beers that really got me into the American brown ale as I said 
said. But please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. And uh, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out Anchor Brewing Company from San Francisco. And uh, I will be doing more reviews from these guys in the future. I thank you for watching and I will catch you again soon. Cheers.